Okay, this quick tutorial is all about DNA. We know DNA is double-stranded. We know that it's made up of the bases adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thymine. And scientists, when they figured out that it's only made up of those four bases, thought it's not possible for those four bases to be responsible for all the different varieties that you get of protein. So they devised an experiment using bacteriophage. Now bacteriophage are basically viruses that have evolved to infect bacteria because as we already know from unit one, sorry unit two, viruses are not living. They are acaryotes, so they have no nucleus. They have genetic material, which could be DNA or RNA. And in order to replicate, they have to insert that into bacteria. So what scientists devised was a clever little plan where they radioactively labelled, so we'll show that in pink, the DNA, and they also radioactively labelled with a different um, label, the proteins. So we'll label the proteins a different colour, we'll label those green. And I said, right, okay, if we find that the protein gets inside the bacterium here and then we get new viruses, proteins, being made, we know that it's the proteins that are responsible. So they used a label that's specific to and only found in proteins, so they labelled um, the sulphur radioactively. And they said, right, okay, if we think that it is DNA, although they're a bit sceptical because they didn't think it was complex enough, um, then we would find the DNA inside the bacterium. And if we label that with the label that you only find in DNA, so they labelled that the phosphorus was radioactively labelled, so that's P, radioactive. And if our products are actually then radioactively labelled as well, then we know that it's the DNA that's produced these viruses and not the protein. And what they found was when they incubated the bacteriophage, this thing here, that was labelled on its protein and labelled with its DNA, when they incubated it with the bacteriophage, they found that the radioactive labels, so the radioactive phosphorus, got inside the bacterium. Then they treated the bacterium and shook them so that any um, non-requirement radioactively labeled substances, like the protein, weren't attached. Incubated the bacteria and found that the bacteria produced lots and lots of viruses even though they hadn't had any of the radioactively labelled protein inside of them. And that proved, basically, that it was the DNA that got inside, and it was the DNA that was responsible, and only the DNA that was responsible, for making new viruses. Now, that was only possible because the viral DNA that they used wasn't associated with proteins. If they had used any other kind of eukaryotic DNA, then because histone proteins would have also been labelled up with the radioactivity S labelled, then it would have been inconclusive. They wouldn't have been able to prove whether it was the proteins or whether it was the DNA that caused the reaction because they would have found both radioactive labels inside the bacterium. But as it is, viruses only have DNA that is not associated with histone proteins, so there's no histone proteins in viral DNA. So that's your evidence that DNA is responsible for um, life, effectively. So why is that possible? Well, we know that the DNA code is universal, i.e. if a bacterium reads AGG, and in a bacterium that might lead to I don't know, uh, lysine, uh, in a virus, 
it would lead to the amino acid lysine. In a human, it will be lysine. And in a mouse, it will be lysine. So the point is, that means that the DNA code is universal. It doesn't matter where you put it, what organism you put it in, it will read it the same code as the same amino acid. And so therefore you can give a bacterium, a virus, a genetic code from a human, and it would read it and produce the same protein with the same amino acid sequence. Now, the other piece of evidence that's on that same page as this particular experiment is how did they figure out what the bases are coded for? So how do they know that P, um, that a group, a triplet, so a triplet of, say, AAA, coded for phenylalanine and uh, UUU, coded for isoleucine or whatever. And basically, all they did was they incubated um, 20 different test tubes, all containing the different types of amino acids, all the way up to 20. And they put in just a poly mRNA. So for example, if they put in UUU into each of those, then the only test tube they would get a polypeptide made in would be the one that contained phenylalanine, showing that UUU codes for phenylalanine. So they can do that for all the different codes, keep putting them in, and whatever amino acid they make in their polypeptide chain, they know that that's the code for that amino acid. Doesn't work for all your different triplets, because if you remember there are 64 triplets, but only 61 code for an amino acid. The other three code for a stop. And so, therefore, if they don't code for an amino acid, then you'll end up with not making any polypeptides in any of the test tubes when you put in any of those three triplets. And so you can't prove that that codes for an amino acid because it doesn't. It codes for a stop instead.